Hi there, and welcome to the Azure Communication Services video library. My name is Dan Walleen. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how Azure Communication Services can be used to send email. So if you've ever wanted to have a service that can send out a lot of email or just a little, you're in the right place. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's start off by talking about different use cases for email. Now, I think we're all pretty good at knowing when email can be sent, but from a business standpoint, there are some use cases that can really help with your customer engagement, and that's what we're gonna talk through. So first off, normally you'll have trigger-based email communications from an application to a customer. For example, you might have an appointment reminder. Every time I sign up for an appointment with my doctor, I now get an email notification to remind me about it and even give me the opportunity to cancel that appointment. So that would be one scenario, whether it's medical related, an appointment with a personal trainer at a gym or whatever it may be. We could also have purchase confirmation and receipt emails. A customer purchases some type of a product, we send them that email, and then once it's ready, we send them the receipt as well. Maybe your service is down and you just like to keep your customers engaged and let them know that you're aware of it, you're working on it, and when it will potentially be back up. Or maybe you have weekly activity summaries. This could be something related to a fitness app. It could be related to a timesheet. It could be related to reading, really anything at all where you want to provide a summary to your customers. And then finally, maybe two-factor authentication is used through email. A user logs in. They've requested two-factor authentication through email. They then get that email and code and can complete the login process. Now, of course, this is just a few of many scenarios that are available, but this should give you an idea of what's possible. Now that you've seen some of the different scenarios for email, let's talk about features. The Azure Communication Services email functionality is pretty robust. You have easy onboarding and simple setup within the Azure portal. You can also send a high velocity of messages, and we typically call these A2P or application to person. And you could use those for some of the use cases we just talked through. In addition to that, you can use custom domains. Now, there is an option where you can let Azure manage the domain for you, but for most of us, we're going to want to send these emails from a custom domain, and that's something you can set up with this email functionality. There's also SDK support, software developer kits. They can add this rich collaboration type of capability into your applications. Currently, there are .NET and JavaScript SDKs that are available, and there's also a REST endpoint you can integrate with. Anytime you're interacting with customers, you're gonna want some analytics on how it went. We, of course, support email analytics to measure the success of delivery and break down engagement tracking, which can be useful for not only marketing, but just standard emails that keep you engaged with your customers. And then finally, security and compliance are always important, and we honor and respect data handling and privacy requirements that Azure promises to you as our customers. And that's all part of the Azure Communication Services email functionality. If we break down how this works from a high level, this is what it looks like. You'll have a custom application like the Contoso application that you see here. You can then integrate with the Azure Communication Services and the email functionality. Take advantage of an email processing service that'll handle sending these through Exchange Online. And then your end users get these emails in their inboxes. As mentioned earlier, you can do this by setting up a custom domain if you'd like and you'll learn a little bit more about that in the demo that's coming up. Let me turn things over to Bala, who's gonna walk us through this demonstration. Hello everyone, I'm going to walk you through how to send an email using Azure Communication Services. This is our quick start guide. You can uh, follow this step-by-step -step instruction. We're going to follow the prerequisites to create an email communication resource. So if you go to our marketplace, search for email communication services, you will see a Email communication service preview resource. You can create this resource, few basic steps, and it will land in this overview page if you complete the creation. So you can add two types of email domains. One is the Azure managed domain, and you can set up a custom domain, which is you bring your own domain and verify with us. So Azure managed domain is the one-click setup. So if you click 
you will get an Azure subdomain like this, which will have all the SPF, the center policy framework, and uh, domain key validations all added and verified and ready to send an email. So option is you set up your own domain. So we are going to walk you through how to set up a custom domain here. So we will use your own domain here. So I'm going to use a welcome dot Azure .net domain. That's one that I'm going to register. I'm going to type that confirm to make sure that it's all spelled correctly. Verify one more time, click add. So now um, it's going to add a configuration setup for you. So what's happening? We need three steps to send an email. So you have to configure and verify your custom domain and connect your verified domain to an Azure communication service resource. And you can start sending email using our um, SDK. So now we are ready. So these all these configurations will be contained under this resource. So that's what uh, this resource is getting created for you. So I'm ready to verify this domain now. I'm going to click verify. You see the text record that I talked about is coming up. So I'm going to copy these text values while talking to you. I'm adding those text records behind the scene with my DNS. So click next. It will give you the summary of information that you uh, need. All right, so now you need to make sure your DNS record is added and come back and you can verify whether this domain is ready to configure the SPF and DCAM records. Let's close this. So if you click the provision domains page, this is the first domain that we added the default domain. The other one is under uh, verification is in progress. Go to the default Azure domain. You always have this quid.azurecom.net so you will not able to change that however you can still decorate your um, display name for instance if you want uh, ACS emails you can actually change that to um, whatever you like as your display name the customer wants to see let's go back and see if our uh, domain is now verified let us click refresh this is, all right now it's verified so let's go ahead and create the SPF and DCAM records for our domain. So it's the same set of uh, text records that you need. Uh, so this is the SPF value for this. And uh, your domain keys, identified mail records. Um, so you need to add these CNAME records, uh, DCAM, DCAM to CNAME records, I'm adding it as we speak. Click next. So this will give you a summary of records that you need to add in your DNS, done close awesome so our custom domain is now ready to send email you see we have a verified spf and dcam status so now if you go back to our communication resource you need to still create a communication resource and click uh, connect your email domains click connect domains uh, you need to select um, the subscription and the resource group so let me select the resource group i have for email and the email communication service resource and you see those two verified domains is showing up here so i'm going to select the welcome audio.mail and click connect awesome great see now my email communication resource to send email i have a domain with the connected status let's quickly go to our uh, Visual Studios to send an email. I already created this small program, so you need to get the connection string. So I have added the connection string in the app config. So this is coming from your email communication resource. So if you go here, click keys, and you can get the connection string value. So you can copy that and paste it there. So this is our SDK. So you had to create an email friend using that connection string and you need to make sure uh, you create the email content so i have a, a email content object created and i'll just use the client to call the send method with my email message uh, so once the message is sent you can call the get send status to view the status of the email uh, so we will be looking for two things whether your message is queued and whether the message is out for delivery so if you get 
those two status successfully, then your email is uh, out to deliver to your email providers. Let's see how it goes. Awesome. So you got the message ID back. This is the one you used to try trace back your status. So your message status is now queued. So we will be looking for message status as out for delivery. It means that it passed all our validations and it is handed over for the delivery. Excellent. Now message is out for delivery. So let us check our inbox and see we have this message available. You see. Uh, email coming welcome.azurecommails.net that's it well thanks for joining us for this video in the azure communication services library i hope that gives you an idea of how you can get started sending email using azure communication services i'd encourage you to check out the link that you'll see on your screen here to learn more and watch the other videos in our library if you're interested in additional features we'll catch you in the next video